Okay, let's talk about Ukraine. Usually we have a media block, but we had to talk about so much about Trump, we can't drop what's happening in the most consequential war in Europe since World War II. So there's been actually a pretty significant political development with Finland, our new uh, NATO ally. Let's go ahead and put that up there on the screen. Finland and Estonia, who is also in NATO, are urging the European Union to stop issuing tourist visa to all Russian citizens. So Helsinki says that Russians are entering their country and using their airports to actually fly elsewhere within the EU. They do not want Russians to be able to traverse the EU whatsoever. They're saying that this is a violation of some of the sanctions, um, and especially a circumvention of air travel in order to try and destroy the Russian uh, air travel industry. Now, Moscow and uh, Aeroflot and all of them have always actually kind of operated as a waypoint for some airlines. And I'm already seeing reports that the uh, Aeroflot and others are having trouble servicing their Boeing 737s. This happened to Iran. You know, they've been flying the same jets since like the 1970s. They got quite adept actually at uh, figuring out how to still run Iran Air. But Russia is still in trouble. I think, though, that this just shows you a tremendous, uh, really, frankly, escalation on their part because, actually, it's interesting. You know, I was traveling uh, when I was coming back from India, and I saw a bunch of Russians in the airports, and I was like, wow, like, where are you guys going? I was like, I can't, I can't even believe you're allowed to go anywhere. Um, but what it is is that the tourist visa ban would effectively apply to hundreds of thousands of not only people who are students, but it would bleed into sports events. It would bleed into all sorts of like civil society yeah. activity, nice. which had been continuing. Terrible. We talked about Wimbledon, you know, yeah. our, so it's not like Wimbledon had already banned them, but there are many other obviously equal applications of this. And the vice versa treatment of that would really bring back a, an, an iron curtain the likes of which Europe has not seen since the 1950s, the 1960s, which is just remarkable it's, when you consider it. So it is a, this is a big escalation on their part. And if anything, this would really, I wouldn't say escalate things with the government, but at the citizenry level for mm-hmm. Russians, I think this would probably send a very hostile message. I'm not uh, saying that isn't necessarily a reason to do it, but just telling you, like, if you care about making sure that the Russian population isn't as susceptible to Putin and all of that, this would almost certainly send that signal to the Russian people of like, hey, you can't even go to Berlin. You know, places that you've been going for it's decades. Completely, now, it's completely point. unjustifiable. Yeah. I mean, how can you say this is a, you know, basically a dictator in Putin mm-hmm. who's doing whatever he wants without any democratic consent and then impose these kind of sanctions on ordinary people who you just said have no say in right. what the government is ultimately doing. It's just it's just rank xenophobia. I mean, it plays to the worst sort of grotesque human instincts. And then to your point, just in terms of strategic calculation, it plays right into Putin's hands because mm-hmm. his narrative has always been, they hate you, the West is against us, they want to destroy us. And then when you levy these kinds of sanctions that hit just just indiscriminately ordinary Russians, which, you know, these aren't the first ones that would do that, but very sort of personalized, yeah, you're you're backing up basically what he's been trying to sell to the population. So I think it's gross. There was another uh, headline that I also thought was, was really gross and frankly sort of sociopathic. The U.S. is telling Africa that they can buy Russian grain, but they can't buy Russian oil. Mm. And some of these nations are suffering on a massive scale. Here's what they say. African nations are free to buy grain from Russia, but could face consequences if they trade in U.S. sanctioned commodities such as Russian oil. The U.S. ambassador to the U.N. said Thursday, here's her quote, this is Linda Thomas-Greenfield, countries can buy Russian agricultural products, including fertilizer and wheat, but if a country decides to engage with Russia where there are sanctions, then they are breaking those sanctions. This was said while she was visiting Uganda. These nations are suffering. I mean, the the amount of famine, the amount of impoverishment, just how much they are struggling with inflation and with um, climate crisis and droughts and all kinds of issues with their own crops. And then you're going to say, like, sorry, you can't buy the cheaper Russian oil. Mm. It's... I think it's really gross. I think it's really heartless, and I think it's really wrong. There's just no two ways around it. Well, the real issue, too, and actually they even pointed to this, is they're like, hey, uh, you know, this would actually have a major impact also on people who are in Russia who don't want to be in Russia. (laughs) So, like, you have a lot of brain drain, which already happened, probably continuing daily. So it would actually penalize also, like, any friendly, Western-friendly Russians who live in Russia. Uh, And one of the major concerns that we saw is that one possibility that's being floated in, in, in Estonia is the a possible closure 
of the Estonian-Russian border, where there's actually a significant amount of cross-trade that occurs there, but also is a major entry point for Russians into the European right, Union right. and into NATO space. Finland yes. also reportedly considering this. Now, it's being currently talked off, but look, we're entering that phase of the war where there's like a grinding things going on, and some people are searching for like that one weird trick that might push things in the right direction, and that's usually when escalation goes to the next level. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.